Korea move won't create negative perceptions towards Malaysia. Improved SOP for reopening of secondary schools. Good evening, I'm Cynthia Arthur. You're watching News at 10. Since North Korea announced on Friday that it is severing ties with Malaysia, its embassy in Jalan Batai in Bukit Damansara has been the focal point for local and foreign media. Both local and international media personnel started converging outside the embassy as early as 7.30 a.m. to monitor the movements there after Malaysia ordered all North Korean diplomatic staff and their dependents to leave the country within 48 hours. Several individuals believed to be embassy staff were seen entering the building as early as 8.15 a.m. The embassy is said to have about 20 staff and dependents. At about 10.20 a.m., some medical personnel from a private hospital were seen entering the premises in a van, probably to conduct swap tests on those who will be returning to Pyongyang. According to the reporters outside the embassy, their sources had indicated that the staff and dependents will most probably leave for Pyongyang tomorrow via Beijing. There were movements of vehicles in and out of the embassy building until the gates were closed at 12.30 p.m. The embassy was helmed by Charge d'Affaires Kim Yusong. North Korea's last ambassador to the country was Kang Chol, who was expelled in 2017 over his provocative remarks relating to the murder of Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of North Korean Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. Pyongyang announced yesterday that it would sever diplomatic relations with Malaysia after a Malaysian court earlier this month ruled that a North Korean businessman could be extradited to the United States to face money laundering charges. Wisma Putra said it deeply regretted North Korea's decision and hence in turn will close the Malaysian embassy in Pyongyang, of which the operation had already been suspended since 2017. North Korea's decision to sever diplomatic ties with Malaysia will not create negative perceptions among other countries towards Malaysia. Senior Minister come International Trade and Industry Minister Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali said the matter will also not affect foreign investments into the country as the extradition of North Korean businessman Moon Chol Myung, who was charged on money laundering to the United States, was based on law, including international law. Dan ini juga diperhatikan oleh pelabur-pelabur uh, asing sama ada Malaysia mengambil tindakan selari dengan peruntukan perlembagaan dan peruntukan undang-undang. Jadi kalau kita berpegang kepada keluhuran perlembagaan dan undang-undang negara dan juga di peringkat antarabangsa, uh, saya tidak uh, melihat ianya akan menjejaskan. Malahan Malaysia masih lagi menjadi destinasi pelaburan yang amat popular di kalangan pelabur-pelabur asing. Elaborating further, Dato Sri Azmin said, as proof that Malaysia remained the destination of choice for foreign investors, Malaysia would receive new investment from a South Korean company worth 2.3 billion ringgit to build an electric vehicle battery production plant in Sabah. He said he will go to Sabah with Prime Minister Tan Sri Mugiden Yassin, who will witness the new investment agreement from the company from Seoul. The country logged 1,671 new COVID-19 infections as of noon today, with Selangor recording the highest number of new cases. The health ministry said the total number of active cases currently stands at 14,442. Of the total, only two were imported cases, while the rest were local transmissions. More than a third of the new cases were reported in Selangor with 652 cases, followed by Pulau Pinang, 328 cases, Sarawak with 154 cases and Johor with 130 cases. Perlis and Putrajaya reported no new cases, while Labuan and Pahang reported three new infections each. 
Four more deaths were reported today, raising the total number of COVID-19 fatalities to 1,229. A total of 151 cases are currently being treated at ICUs, including 64 patients who require ventilators. Meanwhile, 1,585 patients have been discharged, raising the country's recovery tally to 316,042 individuals. Four new clusters were also reported involving two workplace and two community clusters. Academics and health sciences students must strive to support, promote and expand existing innovative efforts, especially the National COVID-19 Immunization Program, to tackle the pandemic crisis in the country. Health Minister Dato Sri Dr. Adam Baba said this is vital so that Malaysia can obtain herd immunity within the stipulated period and subsequently benefit the people. Sejak berpuluh tahun yang lalu, graduan dalam bidang sains kesihatan telah memberikan banyak sumbangan dalam memastikan kesihatan masyarakat kita faham bahawa usaha dan tanggungjawab dalam memastikan kesihatan serta membangunkan masyarakat ini bukanlah satu yang mudah namun juga tidak mustahil banyak idea dari warga IPT sama ada ahli akademik maupun pelajar telah diterjemahkan untuk kemajuan negara kita. Speaking after launching the All Malaysia Health Science Students Convention COMSIS 2021, Dr. Sri Dr. Adam said the Health Ministry hopes that all efforts and initiatives undertaken would give a positive implication to the country as well as its population. A total of 389,177 individuals in the first phase group of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program have been vaccinated so far. Deputy Health Minister Dr. Noor Azmi Zali said the total indicated that the program is on track to achieve the target of 500,000 individuals in the frontline group getting the vaccine by April. He said, looking at the progress of the vaccination program so far, he believes the target set for the first phase can be achieved. And what is even more encouraging is that more than 5.9 million people have registered for the program as of yesterday. He was speaking at a media conference after a handover ceremony at the Jelly District Health Office project today. The Jelly Health Office project, costing about 15.9 million ringgit, began in 2018 and was completed at the end of last year to benefit 50,000 residents in Jelly. Commencing on the vaccination program in Kelantan, Dr. Dr. Noor Azmi said 19,630 people have received the vaccine from the target of 21,645 under the first phase up to the end of April. He said in Kelantan, the vaccination program achievement is more than 88%, with 151 people absent during the exercise, while 183 others refused vaccination. Meanwhile, he noted that the ministry has detected that certain individuals who had registered as vaccine recipients but failed to show up for their shots on their appointment dates. He said the COVID-19 Vaccine Supply Access Guarantee Special Committee, JKJAV, will continue to monitor the number of individuals registered to be vaccinated to avoid such discrepancies. The Education Ministry, MOE, will be using the strict Stranded Operating Procedures, SOP, currently enforced in the primary schools for the reopening of secondary schools next month. However, its minister, Dato Dr. Radzi Jidin, said there will be some improvement on several aspects of the rules so that they will be suitable for the different environment in the secondary schools. Sama, cuma seperti mana saya sebut tadi, ada konteks-konteks tertentu. Ya, seperti mana dalam konteks penyurayan, dia berbeza sedikit uh, kerana uh, uh, tidak seperti mana sekolah rendah, sekolah menengah ni ramai murid-murid uh, balik sendiri. Benda-benda ni yang kita ni, apa yang kita lihat dalam konteks yang berbeza itu, kita akan lihat bagaimana kita boleh bekerjasama dengan ibu bapa dan murid-murid ini supaya proses itu berjalan dengan baik. Dan sama-sama kita doakan insya Allah uh, prosesnya dapat berjalan dengan lancar. 
Speaking after visiting the Sekolah Kebangsaan Putrajaya Precinct 18 1, he said the State Education Department and District Education Office have been instructed to make inspections at the schools. He also said the ministry is currently satisfied with the level of compliance with SOP at the primary schools that have been reopened since earlier this month. A 12-year-old girl who was having a picnic with her family drowned after being swept away by strong currents in Sungai Mas, Sungai Limbing, Pahang today. Kuantan Police Chief ACP Muhammad Nur Yusof Ali said the victim, Nur Shakira Shahrizan, was believed to have drowned at 10.15 a.m. and her body was found about 10 minutes later. The victim was reported to have gone to the river with her parents and five siblings at about 8.30 a.m. ACP Muhammad Noor said the girl and her two younger brothers began struggling with the current as soon as they got into the water and their father rushed to save them. However, he only managed to save the two boys and other members of the public and villagers also tried to help and they handed the victim over to the father once she was found. According to ACP Muhammad Noor, the victim's father then took the victim to the Sungai Limbing Health Clinic where she was confirmed dead and her body was taken to the Tengku Ampuan Afzan Hospital for an autopsy. Meanwhile, in a separate case, the body of Muhammad Hakim Fakih Norazmi, aged 16, who was believed to have drowned in Sungai Pahang, Kampung Loyang in Temerlo, about a week ago, was found today. Pahang Fire and Rescue Department JBPM Operations Division Assistant Director Ismail Abdul Ghani said the body was found next to a fish cage at 12.45 p.m., about three kilometers from the place he was last seen, and his body was handed over to the police for further action. Muhammad Hakim Fakir was believed to have drowned on the 14th of March after being swept away by the current while trying to save his nephew, Muhammad Naufal Farhan Muhammad Azrul 8, who also drowned during the incident. The nephew's body was found the next day. Seven houses and two vehicles were damaged in a fire at Jalan Pulai Perdana 9 Stroke 9, Taman Pulai Perdana Skudai in Johor Bahru today. No injuries or deaths were reported as all residents managed to escape. Skudai Fire and Rescue Station Chief, Senior Assistant Fire Superintendent Mohamed Ridwan Akhyar said the incident was reported at 8.13 a.m. and 12 personnel with an engine along with an Emergency Medical Rescue Services EMRS unit were involved in the firefighting operation. The fire was said to have started from vehicle parked in the parking lot which then spread to the house. He added, when firefighters arrived, the fire had engulfed around 40% of the house structure while the other houses sustained burns to the car garage area. He said a Proton Exora and a Yamaha LC135 motorcycle that had parked at a parking lot of a house were 90% destroyed by the fire. The fire was brought under control at 9.43 a.m. and the cause of the fire and estimated losses are still being investigated. to channel 260 million ringgit to all states under Pemerkasa. The strategic program for empowering the people and the economy Pemerkasa initiative announced by the government will help small and medium enterprises, SMEs, switch to the latest technologies such as automation, robotics and the use of digital economy. Senior Minister come International Trade and Industry Minister Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali said during the COVID-19 pandemic period, the use of digital economy had moved faster and saw an increase in e-commerce. Ini memberi peluang kepada SMEs kita untuk menembusi pasaran-pasaran baru di luar Malaysia. Pasaran Malaysia ini terlalu kecil. Kita hanya mempunyai 32 juta rakyat sahaja. Tetapi kalau kita mampu menggunakan teknologi digital, kita dapat menembusi pasaran di rantau ini. ASEAN saja mempunyai populasi 650 juta. Dan baru-baru ini kita telah menandatangani perjanjian RCEP yang dapat menembusi pasaran di 15 buah negara. 
through Pemerkasa, Bank Negara Malaysia has increased the targeted assistance and rehabilitation facility by 2 billion ringgit and the automation and digitization facility by 700 million ringgit to assist SMEs in obtaining loans. Overall, the government has allocated 6 billion ringgit to benefit the enterprises. The government has agreed to directly channel special assistance amounting to 260 million ringgit to all state governments. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Seri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz said the aid would be distributed equally with each state receiving 20 million ringgit for the immediate implementation of small projects to revive the local economy at the grassroots level. Explaining further, Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul said the government had increased the allocation for those projects this year through the strategic program to empower the people and the economy of Pemerkasa. He said the allocation would be used for the repair of public infrastructure and facilities, road repairs, social amenity programs and others. Untuk kontrak-kontrak G1 hingga G4 Untuk apa kontrak-kontrak kecil Kerana dia ada multiply impact tu memang very high Dia uh, ganda, ganda ekonomi tu very tinggi ya. Dan Kita lihat when kita uh, daripada kontrak-kontrak kecil ni G1 hingga G4 Kalau, kalau dia ini dapat rangsangkan ekonomi uh, dengan lebih cepat lagi lah According to the minister, the distribution of special assistance under Permerkasa is in line with the announcement of the package by Prime Minister Tan Sri Mugirin Yassin on the 17th of March. A total of 40,000 units of affordable housing in the federal territories under the Residency Prihatin Initiative, including 20,000 units for the army personnel, are expected to be completed within three to five years. Federal Territories Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa said that this target can help to speed up the home buying process and provide comfortable housing for the targeted groups. Kita harap 40,000 unit rumah yang berharga bawah 200,000 iaitu rumah prihatin, residensi prihatin dan juga rumah-rumah yang khusus untuk anggota Angkatan Tentera. Malah pihak PDRM juga telah mula mengambil langkah-langkah yang sama. Ini semuanya diselaraskan dari segi fizikal planningnya oleh Kementerian Wilayah melalui Jawa Menaraya, Putrajaya dan Perbadanan Labuan dan kita bekerjasama secara interagensi. Residency Prihatin Initiative is offering affordable housing units with each 750 square feet unit will be sold at about 200,000 ringgit which is below the market price. Sungai Kingkim in Pasir Gudang, Johor is one of the Pilot River Reserve areas that will be upgraded into a recreational site under the National River Trail Program in an effort to conserve the river in the state. Johor Menteri Besar, Dato' Hasni Muhammad, said through the program, the river reserve area would be developed as a recreational park with the construction of a river trail. He said about 2,000 kilometres of affected rivers in the state have been selected from a total of 10,000 kilometres across the country to be developed into river trial roads and recreation sites for the local communities. Mungkin dilihat um, uh, agak um, terpencil, uh, maka aktiviti-aktiviti yang uh, uh, tidak sewajarnya berlaku di sepanjang uh, Sungai Kim Kim. Uh, saya dapat melihat sendiri dengan uh, mata kepala saya bahawa uh, terdapatnya uh, pembuangan yang tentu-tentunya menjejaskan uh, kualiti air Sungai Kim Kim ini. He said this after participating in the Gotong Royong Sayangi Kim Kim program in conjunction with World Water Day at Sungai Kim Kim today. According to Dato' Hasni, at the initial stage, the cost to beautify the area and build a trail on the Sungai Kim Kim would cost 500,000 ringgit. As Sungai Kim Kim flows through an industrial area, he said the implementation of the trial program required the cooperation and contributions of the factories around the area to ensure its success. 
toxic pollution in Sukhngai Kim Kim on the 7th of March 2019, affecting nearly 6,000 residents, including school students, caused 111 schools in the Pasir Gudang area to be closed temporarily. And that concludes this evening's news at 10. In our top story, North Korea's decision won't impact investments. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Cynthia Arthur. Stay tuned to Saluran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening.